Now that we've got the orthographic views settled down, we're going to create a renderable camera. The audience is going to see through the lens of the camera. I'm going to go to the Create menu, Cameras, and you'll see there are several options here. I'm going to choose Camera and Aim because that gives me a handy look at point so I can point the camera in a certain location. Now Maya cameras unfortunately are by default only one centimeter in size. So I'm going to have to zoom in really close or perhaps hit the F key to see the camera and its aim point. You'll see here there's a camera. All right, and we can go into our perspective view and press F there too so we can get in really close. I'm going to hit 4 to see wireframe for just a moment. I've got a camera, okay, here, and I've got an aim point or look at point. And if I move the camera, it's always going to stay looking at that location. All right, so I'm going to dolly back out and I'm going to move the camera out far enough and I'm going to change the scaling of the camera so that I can see it better. But the one thing about this is that I don't want to actually scale the camera in the transforms. That could get me into trouble later, especially if I'm using image planes or if I have a, a camera rig set up. It's usually not a good idea to scale the camera. Instead, I'm going to go to the attributes of the camera shape node. Up here, I've got my attribute editor. And I'm going to just go way, way down, way, way down, skipping past almost everything until I see object display. I'll open that up and I've got a value here and I've got an attribute here called locator scale. I'm going to set that to about 20. Now the camera's 20 centimeters in size so it's large enough for me to be able to see. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load that camera into a panel so we can see through the camera lens. The side view here is not that important to us. We're going to be animating in the front view. So we're going to sacrifice the side view. Go to the Panels menu. And under Perspective, I should see my new Camera 1. When I choose that, now I'm looking through the camera lens. If I go into any of the other views like Perspective or Front or Side and move the camera around, we're now seeing through the camera lens in this viewport down here. All right, excellent. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to set the camera and its aim point so that we can see the ground plane filling the frame. So press the five key here so we can see shaded. And I'm gonna turn off the grid here too. So what we're trying to achieve here is we want to have this ground plane fill the entire frame so that we don't have any black void in our rendering. Well, in order to do that, we won't really know what's in the frame and what's out of frame unless we enable an option in our camera. And that's very, very important. Whenever you're setting a camera, you always have to have resolution gate turned on. So in the view menu here, I can go to camera settings and I want to turn on the resolution gate. When I enable that, I should see a box in my viewport. And this is telling me what the camera can see. Anything outside of this line in this area here is invisible to the camera and everything inside is visible to the camera. So I'm just going to finalize my camera position because I want to try to set it up so that we're not seeing any of this empty space here. I can click on the camera aim point as well and sometimes it's a bit tricky to do so because you might click here and be unable to select the aim point because Maya always wants to select the geometry. Well there's a bunch of different ways I could deal with this. The easy one right now is I'll just change my polyplane down to one segment then it's easier for me to select my aim point. So you see, as I move the aim point, the camera's point of view is changing too. All right, so I've got it more or less where I want it. 
I can also play around with the camera's zoom lens. In my perspective view, I'm going to press F so we can get up really close to that camera and see this happening. In the camera channel box or attribute editor, you'll see something called focal length. And you can adjust this value to zoom in or out. So lower numbers are going to zoom the camera lens out. You can see that the lens has changed shape here. I can select the name of the attribute and middle mouse click and drag also. So you see what's happening here. We're zooming in and out. Low numbers mean the lens is zoomed out or wide and high numbers zoom in or tight. This focal length by default in Maya corresponds to a 35 millimeter still camera lens. Okay. So we basically got our scene set up now, and this is a good time to save once again. So I'll go to save scene as, and I'm going to actually save a new version. You should always get into the habit of saving lots of versions, not just one. Now that we've got our scene set up, our models built and our camera roughly positioned, we can add materials or shaders to the scene to provide some visual interest to the models. First thing I'll do is I'll select the sphere and rename it in the channel box to ball. Same with the ground plane. I'll select it and go up to the top of the channel box and type in ground. It's always a good idea to give all of your models unique names so you'll be able to tell what you're dealing with. Next I'll select the ball and I'm going to add a new material. The easiest way to do that is with the object selected. Just right click anywhere in the viewport to get the marking menu. And you'll see near the bottom of the marking menu, assign new material. There are several different types of materials in Maya. And let's just look at the categories very quickly here. The top section here is all surface shaders. So a surface shader is appropriate for applying to a solid surface like a ball or human skin. The next section down here is for volumes, for things like fire and fog. Then at the bottom are all of the mental ray materials. Mental ray is an advanced rendering engine and it comes with a lot of very fancy materials. Okay, so we're just going to do the basics here. Up at the top you'll see something that says Blind. This is a general purpose shader that was developed by a guy named Jim Blind back in the 70s. And it's really the most common material shader because it's the most versatile. When I release the mouse button, a new Blind material is created and assigned to the ball. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just hit the F key to zoom in on the ball so I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to rename the shader. Let's call it Ball Blind. Put an underscore in there. And press Enter. You do have to hit the Enter or Return key on the keyboard. Otherwise, the name change will not take effect. The Blind shader has lots of different attributes that we can play with. For example, color. That's also known as the diffuse color. And that's the most important color component of a material. I can click on the color swatch here to select a different color. Blue, green. I could choose to lower the saturation or lower the value and dial in whatever color I like. 